So we got the seed bins, right? Not yep. the bins. Is that what they're called? Hey, you can call them bins, hoppers, hoppers whatever. whatever. Yeah, I don't you can call them whatever you want to. They're things, Apparatus. containers, Tupperware. Tupperware, <laughs> seed Tupperware. Welcome back to Ag with Emma. We are in Minnesota today. Oh, <laughs> Zach and one, one Jim are surfacing the tractor oh, because it's almost planting season and that's what you do. Um, we were just doing that in Idaho, so they're also doing that in Minnesota. And then after this, we'll probably teach you a little bit basics of the planter that they're using, a breakdown of it, just so you're familiar with planter parts and you understand what the planter is doing. But we're just gonna let them finish up all their stuff shenanigans. shenanigans really that's all it is you know important shenanigans that keep your tractors running all right so with planting season look at how awkward this dude is hello <laughs> <laughs> i've been standing like that just like he was you know i've been standing in their shop like i've just been waiting because they've been busy and I don't like bugging people. But we're gonna tell you about their planter and I'm gonna bug them now. So we're gonna get all the information about a planter. Big boy over here. Are we good to go? If Zach can explain it. I'll, I mean, I'll do the best I can. Should I do it? Go for it. There's a wheel there and a wheel there, another wheel there, another wheel there. The seed comes, it goes in the ground with all the wheels. Why am I, am I close? Perfect. <laughs> so you might look at a planter because this is a planter. All the seed goes in there, right? Yep, that is the center fill right there. So roughly like 80 bushels of seed that'll go in between the two of them. Mm -hmm. Which plants, depends on what crop you're planting as far as acreage wise. Yeah, we so can do about 125, 120 acres of corn okay. without refilling. Without reloading. Yep. That's quite a bit. How many square feet are in one acre? Hmm? Well, that would be 43,560. I think he hesitated too much. Does he win on that one? Well, that's because I was still, I was doing math and I was wrong. It's 125 per side. Yeah. 43,560 is correct. So 250 acres. 240, 250. So now I got that correct and the square feet in it. Ding, an ding, we got a winner. Okay, so we got the seed bins, right? Not yep. the bins. Is that what they're called? Hey, you can call them bins, hoppers, hoppers whatever. whatever. Yeah, I don't you know. can call them whatever you want to. They're things, Apparatus. containers, Tupperware. Tupperware, <laughs> seed Tupperware. <laughs> and then we've got all the hoses. So we're going to break down the hoses for you because this doesn't just, you can put fertilizer down with it, right? This one actually, you we, we don't have it set up to put any fertilizer down with it. Okay. Most corn planters will put some fertilizer down. So that's a lot of times you'll see the big tank on the hitch exactly. or tanks on the tractor. So if Those are fertilizer yeah. tanks. Fertilizer goes... In front of the planter, the seed hopper tub of wares. Yes. Or it goes behind it in a big cart. Yes, there's that option as well. Do they also, they don't carry seed in the cart behind it ever, do they? Air seeders will. Air seeders do. Yep. Okay. This is not an air seeder. Not to complicate it or anything. No, that's a different, different crops. Like we plant corn and soybeans with this. You can plant corn or soybeans. You can plant soybeans with an air seeder. Mm -hmm. We don't because we're just planting corn and soybeans out here. We're not into like the small grains, the canola, um, help me. Wheat? Wheat, yes, they would plant wheat with an air seeder. Things they, that they plant in like Western North Dakota, Montana, Saskatchewan. Small grains. Big, big acre country, small grains, big acres. The Sask. Sask. Saskatchewans. <laughs> anyway. These are the, I don't know the actual name for the hoses, like the delivery hoses, the seed hoses. Uh, they will actually run, each hose is a different row. It's all running out so you can see as you go down. Oh, okay, less hoses. let's look at that. So each see? one disappears as it goes down to the back to the actual row unit. See, the seed goes right in there and then it yep. comes over here. Seed comes back here, mm -hmm. goes into this unit right here. So wow. because this is a center fill, it has very small hoppers. Okay. So sometimes you'll see corn planters where they don't have the center fills. That's and right, and then they like have bigger a, hoppers right here. A one right or two here. bushel hopper yep. back here. So this actually comes right off so you can see a little bit better. Okay, look at that. So this will meter the seed, and we can open that up if we want to, but this will meter the seed essentially and place it into this brush, which is spinning around at the exact same speed as the as planter. The and it brings it all the way down to the bottom where it places it in a trench or a, a, a seed trench yeah. that is cut by this disc so this disc will cut the opening of the trench and push it out just a little bit it will open it into a v the depth of that 
is controlled by these. So those are your depth. Depth wheels, depth gauge wheels, wheels yeah. whatever you want to call them. You can control that here. <clears throat> There's just a little stop inside there. Okay. So that's obviously a lot shallower. So all those need to be set at the same depth. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you this want is where you the control depth. the depth for your planter. Yep. This is our closing wheels right here. Okay. They're going to come by after the seed has been placed into the trench that was cut. Mm -hmm. And they are going to close that trench. They're going to push. There's an angle, so it's going to push the soil. Yep, it's going to yep. pinch it shut. Yep. And you want to make sure you've got these. these this one actually is run by air, so they're pneumatic. It's got an airbag here, so I can adjust the pressure up and down. Mm -hmm. The old system we had on this planter had a spring in here, so you could adjust the spring tension because you want these wheels to be stiff enough that they close that trench, but not so stiff that they're creating extra compaction. So you kind of got to find that happy medium there for your soil conditions and, and the moisture conditions and everything, whatever you're doing. Beyond that, I mean, that's the very simple version of it inside of our row unit here. So this is a vacuum hose right here. The vacuum is, is being run right there. It's pulling air through the, actually through these tubes right here that come out to each row unit. So each row unit should have ideally the same vacuum pressure. And what the vacuum is doing is actually, it's coming through this cover and it's pulling, pulling a vacuum on this seed ball so that when the seed is fed down in here, comes through this little hopper, it gets fed down here. Yep. And this disc is spinning around the whole time like this. As it's spinning, it's grabbing the seeds and the vacuum holds them into place. Okay. It sucks them into their position. As it comes through, it gets knocked off. And then dropped into there. Knocked off, placed into the brush, yep. and then the brush will bring it down to the trench. And that is how it works. So that looks pretty intimidating to most people because you know, it's like, why do they need all that stuff on there? But it all works out and then the seed is in the ground. Normally you have to calibrate them, right? Before yeah. you plant to make yeah. sure the seed is all at the right depth before you can just go ham. So you don't just put all your stuff in and go ham. You gotta no. make sure it's all at the right depth. And you're all good to go. The first day of planting most years takes quite a while to make sure everything is set right because you're setting like calibrations, speeds, depth. You're making sure your closing wheels are set to the right pressure. Uh, I spend a lot of time on like my on off when I come to the end. So I plant the headlands or the end rows first. The machine will automatically stop. It's, it, they're electrically driven. Mm -hmm. So the row unit will shut itself off when it hits the line that I'm coming to. And there's an on off time to calibrate it for the speed that you come into the end rows at and when you turn to set it down again. Oh. So each one of these is controlled electronically. So you're not, you don't want to plant over the top of what you've already planted. And so what the GPS and the electric row units allow us to do is to be really accurate with that. Did that I get too, so fancy. I felt too serious. I felt too technical. You can <laughs> put a little pep in this step. <laughs> so that's actually the compressor that controls uh, two things. I believe that controls two things. That controls, I believe, that controls the closing wheels. I'd have to remember. But for sure, it's controlling the, uh, it, it does control the closing wheels. And the row cleaners up front, which we did not talk about. Should I hit on those? Let's hit on the row cleaners. Okay. And why y'all need them. And Because some people don't have row cleaners on their planters, right? Right. We didn't have row cleaners for years and years because back in the 80s, early 90s, when they were the hot thing and they were first coming out, Dad had a set and said they were way more problems than they were worth. We're conventional tillage here. Our fields are fairly clean. We don't necessarily need the row cleaners. A lot of no-till guys will use them to really get aggressive as they're planting. We probably don't need them, but they, they are really nice for uh, knocking out root clumps or small rocks or just leveling out if you're going, if your tillage left it unlevel, a lot of times they'll help to level that out. So these are actually pneumatically controlled also. So there's an airbag on each side. One controls the down pressure and one controls lifting up. Mm -hmm. So we can adjust the height of these and we want them basically to run right at the ground. I'm not trying to dig a big trench or anything yeah, or create a furrow. Yeah. I'm just making sure everything's clean before the, the openers get to it to cut that V. Yeah. How fast do planters drive? Normally, like a, a normal planter, the old style planter, what this planter used to be, four to five, five and a half, maybe six. There's some other options out there that'll get you up to maybe seven to eight-ish. Mm -hmm. This one here, they advertise 10 miles an hour, and I swear in my experience, it will do a better job at 10 miles an hour than it does at eight, or it does not fall off. If anything, it gets better. 
I've had rain coming in the forecast and I've pushed it to like 11, 11 and a half miles an hour. Ah. <laughs> which sounds slow if you don't drive tractor. Yeah. But that's fast. That's like a traffic jam. That is fast. Or driving behind someone riding a bike. <laughs> so when you see a planter, you see all the hoses. It's more than the hoses. I get distracted by the hoses. <laughs> and then just for context, Zach is located in... West Central Minnesota. The big clump. I mean, if you if you know where Minneapolis is and Fargo, North Dakota, we're like right in between those two. Exactly. So, but farming all over Minnesota is different. We were just talking about that. They grow different crops on the other side of I. Other side of ninety four, you're gonna get into like some potatoes. Mm -hmm. Actually, a lot of potatoes up north and east. So there's a lot of sugar beets west and northwest where the Red River Valley is. Mostly corn, soybeans, some sugar beets to the south. But then, like, it's not. You go to like the Bonanza Valley area over here, which is only 10, 15 miles from us, and you start getting into irrigated ground where they'll have uh, peas and sweet corn and some of the vegetable crops like that. There are some edible beans around, like kidney beans and uh, black turtle beans. Black turtle beans? Yeah. They're like right here though, it's pretty much corn and soybeans. Yeah. It's a little bit of wheat, alfalfa. Mm -hmm. And people on YouTube really like corn and soybeans. I like corn and soybeans. Maybe and I'm on YouTube, corn, right? so. Exactly, he is on YouTube. If you didn't know that, he's just a Minnesota farmer. No big deal. <laughs> You're walking away because you got fired today. Yeah, I'm fired today. <laughs> By Jim. <laughs> Hello guys, this is Editing Emma. I am at work on lunch break right now, putting together these videos. And I wanted to split the footage that I got with Zach into two parts because the rest of the footage that I have, he covers a lot more good information of breaking down the basics of what he does and his equipment tour. So I don't want that to distract from all the good information you guys just watched. If you want to see part two, make sure you subscribe so you don't miss it. I will be sharing that update on my social media chant, not pages, chant, pages. Make sure you go check out Zach on all his social media platforms. I will tag his YouTube channel in the description of this video. He shares a lot of good stuff consistently or pretty consistently. I don't know. He posts a lot of good farming videos and then I will link his account links in the description as well so thanks for watching make sure you like share subscribe let me know what you liked what you didn't like and go check me out on all your other platforms instagram facebook tiktok you know the drill thanks for watching and i'll catch you on the next video hasta la pasta